thousand percent clear. This is pre plan of the third year biotech department. We, on behalf of the Office of International Collaboration Cell and Magic Association, welcome you all to the twenty fifth day of the KMJR Alumni Conclave two thousand twenty one, titled Higher Education and Job Opportunities in Foreign Countries. Firstly, we take a moment to thank our president, Sir A. C. Sarun Kumar Sir, and our honourable Chancellor Sir A. C. Shanmugam Sir for for providing this opportunity to conduct of this event. It's our pleasure to welcome our Vice Chancellor, Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi Ma'am, and we also thank her for her constant support and encouragement throughout the event. We also like to extend our thanks to M A A M G R Alumni Association leader, Dr. L. Ramesh Sir, Joint Register Event Patent. Alumni for providing a beneficial platform for conduct of this event. We could like to extend our heartly welcome to Dr. R. Kausalya, Ma'am, Dean OIR and Collaboration Cell, and Dr. B. Sujitra, Ma'am, Dean Event. We also thank them for a continuous support, guidance, and motivation for conduct of this event. Now we invite Dean OIR and Collaboration Cell, Dr. R. Kausalya, Ma'am, to welcome the gathering. Please, Ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. On behalf of Office of International Relations in Collaboration Still and Magic Association of Dr. M. G. R. Educational and Research Institute, University, I welcome you all for this 25th day M. G. R. Alumni Conclave 2021. This 25 days, 25 departments, 25 conclave, con conclaves, 25k participants. It is an attempt to the World Book of Records. On this great day, we would like to share our gratitude to our dynamic and honorable president, sir, for his constant support, guidance, and generous funding, which plays a significant role in organizing all the international programs. We would also like to share all a, share that all of the students and faculty members have traveled all across the globe through exchange programs fund, funded by our management. We would like to extend a warm welcome to our respected Vice Chancellor, Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi, ma'am, and Registrar Dr. C.B. Parinuelu, sir. We extend a warm welcome to additional Registrar Dr. V. Siraj, sir, who has been a guiding force of all the international programs organized by the Office of International Relations. We are very much delighted to have you, sir. I'm glad to invite... Okay. We are, we are uh, very much honored to have Dr. L. Ramesh, sir, Joint Registrar, Events, publication, and alumni. It is because of whom we are standing in this alumni conclave here. And thank you so much, sir, for all the support which you are rendering in organizing all the programs which is being organized by the Office of International Relations. We are enlightened to invite the deans, faculty members, deans, HODs, faculty members, and students who are going to participate in this program. We are proud to invite all our alumni. Mr. Satish Kumar Subendran from Mechanical Department, Mr. Vijay Kumar Asokan, Mr. Ms. Revati and Ms. Kavita, and our moderator, Mr. P. Nitesh Raj, who are going to have a discussion on the topic entitled Higher Education and Job Opportunities in Foreign Countries when Applying Through our esteemed University. We are very much happy to invite the participants who are participating in today's event. Definitely, this alumni conclave will provide the insights about the various scholarship opportunities, short-term programs, semester programs, and job opportunities when applying through MGR. Thank you, one and all, and have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. Now we invite our encouraging additional register, Dr. B. Sirulod, sir, to give a special address for this event. Please, sir. Good afternoon uh, to dear uh, friends, alumni friends. So I'm really delighted uh, to see uh, some of uh, our uh, alumni who have gone abroad uh, uh, and then uh, settled, uh, I mean, uh, trying to conquer uh, uh, the system over there. So really happy to see all of them. Um, uh, first, I would like to thank uh, our uh, Founder Chancellor, uh, uh, A.C. Shanmugam, sir, as well as our able uh, president, uh, engineer A.C. Sarun Kumar, sir, for providing such a wonderful opportunity for all of us to excel our career. So really, had it not been this uh, Dr. M.J. Education Research Institute, uh, there is uh, no scope uh, um, and for you and then me uh, uh, to talk uh, uh, like this. So really... Uh, uh, we have to be proud of our alma mater also. Um, uh, 
very recently there are a lot of changes uh, in the functioning of our uh, uh, university uh, after uh, taken over uh, by our uh, beloved president sir uh, 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 dear uh, friends actually uh, our university has expanded a lot uh, right now we have 15 faculties in our uh, uh, university uh, though it is a unitary university uh, like uh, most of the western universities we have multi we have become a multi faceted university uh, as already i told you uh, we have very strong engineering technology then uh, three medical colleges are there in our faculty and then one dental college is also there and then an architecture institution and then uh, uh, medic uh, paramedical uh, sciences are there like uh, uh, physiotherapy nursing and then pharmacy Uh, and then we have uh, the catering uh, institute and then we have uh, uh, education institute also and then we have very recently uh, law uh, faculty of law also brought into our uh, uh, university system so what i'm trying to say is uh, uh, we have uh, multiple opportunities uh, available there in our university itself so um, the students who are uh, uh, learning in this university has started looking into uh, the various other faculties and then uh, trying to find uh, how uh, uh, they can uh, uh, con- I mean, contribute in those faculties so uh, a good uh, inter uh, department as well as inter faculty uh, uh, collaborations are coming out in our university uh, this is what happening there in some of the uh, I mean, uh, developed uh, uh, countries universities also so what i am trying to say uh, i mean at this point no clear so uh, we need to uh, project our university as one of the international uh, destination also uh, so this will be possible unless all of us uh, together uh, 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 understand uh, how exactly that inputs for that particular thing uh, need to be infused uh, in our uh, academic system itself so that's why actually we have uh, a strong uh, foreign affairs uh, department uh, in our university uh, the overseas activities are taken care by uh, dr kausalya and uh, her team so uh, right now we are aiming for at least 5 percentage of our students to visit some of uh, the foreign uh, institutions it could be an educational institution or even it can be an industry also so so that no clear they uh, they should have an international exposure so they should understand what is the gap between uh, the technological gap or other uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, the gap between uh, them uh, uh, and then our practices also so uh, this uh, sort of nuclear uh, uh, activities should uh, always again come back to us and then uh, we have to uh, improve uh, in terms of nuclear our quality so uh, right now uh, uh, we have expanded ourselves horizontally uh, to 15 uh, different faculties but at the same time each faculty need to have a horizontal uh, uh, development also so these things can be possible no clear unless uh, uh, those uh, uh, knowledge comes out from uh, uh, foreign universities uh, to our uh, campus so uh, in two way it has to happen uh, both faculty as well as uh, students should go there to abroad at the same time uh, professors and then uh, students from uh, those countries should also come here and then uh, uh, interact with our uh, students so then only what happens in okay it will be a healthy a win win situation for all of us uh, uh, now uh, we are trying to uh, make uh, i mean encourage these activities uh, through management initiative uh, right now uh, our uh, beloved president sir has uh, um, made a decision so whoever is aiming for a short visit or a long visit to any of the foreign countries they will be provided with one semester tuition fee waiver also so all depends so even if it is a uh, really uh, uh, 
some of the best universities and then if uh, that particular position is obtained uh, through competitions you no know, clear so our uh, and the president sir is uh, very keen in uh, when uh, going beyond this uh, 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 tuition fee waiver uh, also so definitely there are uh, ample opportunities uh, available uh, dear uh, students so right now uh, uh, the panelists are there uh, those panelists actually when uh, they were there in our university we know what was their potential now uh, i think uh, i mean uh, we are witnessing uh, how they have expanded how they have uh, uh, improved their quality is not clear now we are seeing it so these are the i mean uh, things uh, which should happen i mean in large numbers in our university so um, dear uh, students as well as uh, dear uh, alumni friends so this is your institution so uh, uh, we are focusing uh, for international uh, uh, accreditations and then uh, standardization also in the couple of years so in all these cases no clear it is uh, um, the uh, al- alumni is no clear the alumni is profile no clear uh, are going to um, uh, take us to that particular level so uh, i again i am requesting you you guide your alma mater so that no clear this institution will be recognized as one of the world famous institution so that no clear we should be proud of being part of this particular setup uh, now uh, i have to wish all our beloved students uh, a happy prosperous uh, year ahead uh, you should use uh, this opportunity provided by our university to excel in your career thanks a lot uh, uh, dr kausalya and her team for providing such a wonderful opportunity to interact with our alumni friends as well as our beloved students thank you thank you so much sir next we would like to invite our mgr alumni association joint register event patent and alumni dr l ramesh sir to brief us about the mgr alumni association please sir thank you thank you very warm uh, uh, welcome all the alumni uh, speakers and our friends uh, very happy that uh, after 24th day we are in the end today another uh, maybe one and a half hours our uh, uh, massive world record attempt is going to end uh, very happy that uh, congratulation to all the department heads started from the first day to 24th day and the 25th day kausalya ma'am and uh, sujitra ma'am for coordinating the uh, last day event and it was totally monitored and uh, uh, watched by the world book of record team uh, yes uh, coming to the, our program uh, it was very nice that we started the initiative to uh, uh, connect the alumni and present students so then we come out with a lot of ideas how to uh, you all know that we have 125000 alumni passed out from our university and presently we have around 24 25000 present students so we we want to make it uh, within a month we want to make it this interaction between the present students and alumni that is what the idea came then we initiated uh, the program like that we can con- we can ask some each department to uh, uh, coin some program per day like that so that we can have some 20 uh, days like that uh, finally uh, some ideas came uh, coming to the conclusion that uh, yes we need to someone has to what recognize us then only our event has to be in the uh, Uh, has to be created uh, the participant those who are coming also we need to give the certificate uh, tagged by some organization then we discussed with the world book of uh, record organizations like asia book of record world book of record they given lot of suggestions to formalize the event in a common model common structure uh, the, so that uh, the they will they can able to provide the opportunity to get the record so that is what the even come to the conclusion and i am very are we are very happy that we got very good response from the alumni stating that they want to be part of the event as the speaker they want to continue for the next level of thing there is a lot of good interaction between the uh, the present students and uh, that the alumni students happened already so that is very happy news that uh, almost uh, 125000 alumni now it is reached that uh, yes the mgr conclave is there like that uh, so we are going to launch to book after this event uh, 
that we are planning for a validatory uh, maybe another uh, week or 10 days we'll have a validatory and the, the day of the validatory uh, we uh, the wbr team will give the well book of record uh, uh, certificate plus we are going to release uh, one is the uh, alumni conclave book and second book we are going to release the uh, speaker book speaker profile book all our speakers 100 in, uh, 25 into 4 like that around 100 speakers participated moderators are there so this all will coming under the single uh, book so that book also we are going to release so this is what the idea and little lessons uh, which i would like to give you about the outcome our alumni association is now a registered alumni association under society act indian society act uh, very happy that you all uh, very soon we are going to launch the alumni website alumni portal we have two alumni portal one is alma uh, connect where you all are connected and we have ma connect very soon our, our own alumni portal is coming to the picture in alma connect we have 25000 members and in ma connect we have 3000 4000 members so coming to the network we have seven national network and five international network uh, five international network we have asia pacific network european network american network so what we did we uh, uh, connected the uh, maybe nitish already connected nitish came to my office and they told that sir connect me in american network because i am going there like that so the so we connected through the whatsapp and we are communicating all the information so a lot of good things are happening in the whatsapp also for promotion of job from one position to another position we have good experience uh, delhi network we have two group around 500 students are connected in the delhi uh, group and the exchange of jobs happening and fresher students joining there and asking their uh, brothers uh, to get the jobs like that good things are happening for the alumni and we are celebrating the senior reunion we are celebrating silver jubilee and this year silver jubilee fourth silver jubilee and fifth the senior reunion and uh, we come out with the execution of the events ma events we uh, last 3 4 years 75 events organized and department level 400 events organized by the department and coming to the service what we did the our office also doing the emergency service what is the emergency service if a alumni from abroad he or she want to get a consolidated mark sheet immediate some uh, kind of some support from register office or controller office that our office is doing till now 160 alumni got benefited uh, international and 260 national alumni are uh, got benefited we are not doing for all case to case a lot of uh, canada uh, immigration uh, purpose uh, challenging problems immediately they have some problem that our office is taking care so like that we are plan- doing lot of things and next part is the now it is a registered alumni association we want to have a office there as per that president will be there our arun kumar sir will be the president because he is the alumni and uh, secretary joint secretary treasurer joint uh, treasurer committee members this all are we are going to form and uh, once the structure is formed then we are planning for the one day we are going to call it as the alumni day mgr alumni day that day we are planning for the that day will be decided and that day will be celebrated every year and that day in the evening uh, alumni awards will be there so the top alumni will be recognized uh, in that day uh, called mgr alumni awards like that. so this is what the plan of action and we have we are going to release three books one book is the alumni entrepreneur book alumni industry profile book alumni uh, academic profile book so three book also we are going to release till december we are planning for three four another type of inaugurations website inaugurations or uh, portal inaugurations like that So we are doing lot, and uh, as the alumni, you also able to give suggestion for us. We are always ready to get the suggestion and uh, ready to implement for them. Thank you, thank you all uh, for the successful uh, completion of the event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now we invite Dean Evan, Dr. B. Sujitra, ma'am, to walk us through the most and ends of MJR Alumni Conclave 2021. Please, ma'am. Ah, uh, thank you, Pranav. a uh, very good afternoon to one and all who present here i take this opportunity to thank our uh, university and ma alumni association for arranging this wonderful and extraordinary event this conclave will be an eye opener for all the current students and for all the participants to easily gain the information about the current scenario and the benefit of all different stream in different countries we have alumni of different countries in one platform to share their experience challenges and uh, scope in the market and different strategies that different countries are implementing i hope this conclave 
will not only be useful for the students and uh, as a professor we are also eagerly waiting to gain more information uh, i personally thank our uh, honorable president sir Sir, sir, and Ramesh, sir, and Kaushalya, ma'am, and all our alumni and students for giving me this opportunity. Have a great session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I like to introduce the moderator for this event, Mr. Nitish Raj Prasad, biomedical engineering graduate. Ma'am, my video is visible. Yes, 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 ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Now I like to introduce the moderator of the event, Mr. Nitish Raj Prasad, the biomedical engineering graduate student at the University of Illinois at Chicago, United States of America. Mr. Nitish Raj is an alumnus, Department of Biotechnology of our estimated institute, Dr. M J R Education and Research Institute, class of 2021. He completed his B Tech this summer, May 2021. Immediately secured his admission at. University of Illinois Chicago one of the finest institute in united states his zeal for research enabled him to present his work at various nation and international conference across the country he also awarded the best paper award in international conference currently he is working on the data prediction project under the guidance of dr yang dai at the university of illinois at chicago usa having completed 10 engineering projects during his stay at the mjr university also happened to be the founder of the invest utilize and multi source he also organized over 100 plus events during his study at the university he also happened to build the best new gen idc project of the year 2020 for his startup multi source his passion for entrepreneurship for got him opportunity to be the source person of various workshops guest lectures and panel discussion once again we welcome mr nitish raj prasad an inspirational alumnus as the moderator for this wonderful event please sir welcome you sir thank you pranav so uh, a very warm afternoon to one and all present here it's my pleasure to be the moderator for today's panel discussion before we go into the panel discussion i would like to just start the plan for the whole discussion today so this panel discussion is going to consist of six rounds and of which the first round we'll get to know the speakers the panelists and during the second round we'll get your opinions and the third round we'll get into the topic and discuss about uh, what are the you know what are the ends of it and next one we have a set of questions for our panelists that are curated and then is the questions from the audience so if you have any questions audience please save it for the fifth round and then the final round would be a perfect conclusion from all our panelists and looking on to this panel the first thing that came to my mind was this famous quote of the british from the late 19th and early 20th century sun never sets on the british empire I guess that is the most apt quote that we could say for our MGR alumni empire that is over here. We can probably say the sun never sets on the MGR alumni empire, and this pa particular panel is a perfect example for it. Right from the east coast, starting from Taiwan to the west coast, the United States of America, we have our panelists today with us. we do and today's topic on higher education and abroad is indeed a dream for many and higher education is not just a simple thought it's a serious thought but taking it up in a different country is a dream for many and today's panel discussion we aim to break the myths and expand the perspective of the students without further ado let's start into our discussion first starting from the east coast we have mr satish mr satish currently working on an r&d of a famous tech company in taipei graduated from the mechanical department of mjr education research institute in the year 2019 he did his masters from nckyu taiwan and aced with flying colors this summer 2021 mr satish can you share us your success story from an mgrian to where you are today 
thank you nitish for your kind introduction uh, uh very good afternoon to all the members who have been connected for today's conclave so my name is satish and i have been graduated from mgr uh, from the batch of 2019 from the department of mechanical engineering uh, uh when i joined in my first year in uh, mgr i was quite uh, nervous about because uh, i has been grown up uh, in mumbai and studied my schooling um and college from mumbai but when i came to chennai i was like bit nervous uh, uh during my first year but as the year went uh the mgr Uh, the professors from each department, starting from the first year to the final year, it was so amazing that uh, a learning experience that uh, I uh, how to say the learning curve of my the learning curve of mine was uh, like drastically changed uh, uh, from the first year to the final year, and um, also I need to uh, highlight the point. Uh, the literary seminary from our university has also helped me and contributed uh uh in my growth uh and uh, yeah during the final year uh, uh professor dr sendil vilan sir um also uh taught me uh the research uh the importance of research and how to handle uh various projects and interactions with the uh other university uh, professors and how to deal with the issues what we face in the current research scenario and um uh yeah so overall uh, the experience was a great and indeed i cannot uh uh, uh forget the memories uh still it's an like uh, the four years is like uh a great uh thing for me yeah thank you satish i miss you satish like you know uh, i did remember our times you know we had <laughs> during the time yeah it is uh, good to reconnect all those uh, <laughs> yeah we'll come back to you in the next round <laughs> yeah, but before sure. that let's uh, have you know let's get all the other panelists introduced right now so now we are done with asia so now let's move on to the next continent a neighboring continent europe towards the flat lands of europe so we have a biotechnology alumnus who has not only completed her graduate degree outside india but also has started doing her doctoral degree abroad with an interesting success story we have miss revathi class of 2018 completed her masters from upu university milan italy and currently doing her phd at lithuanian university lithuania we are waiting to hear your success story miss revathi Oh, okay. So, is disconnected. Yeah. So I, I guess there's some kind of uh, network disturbance. So, so before going on, oh, uh, during this time, let's hear it from our next panelist, who is to the far west coast, an alumnus of the Department of Biotechnology again. She was also. from the class of 2018 and who's currently working at purple surgical in the r&d department she did her masters from the university of houston clear lake you at sea hill and graduated this year summer 2021 and now currently staying at houston and we are waiting to hear your story now ms kavita hey hi nitish thanks for introducing me and um, hi hello everyone uh, i'm really excited to meet everyone after 3 years and uh, thank i'm very much thankful to mgr alumni association to bringing all of us together and uh, share our knowledge about how we came here and our experience so i graduated from mgr in 2018 and then i came here to pursue my masters in uh, 
molecular biotechnology um i would say professors and um, like staffs of mgr really helped us to get into here in many ways their sops lors and what not other stuff so it was really helpful and currently i'm working as a rnd technician at cooper surgical our company is uh, mainly based on uh, providing solution to infertilities so our company it's a world uh, like worldwide companies which has which has uh, like 30 plus spots um and mainly uh, we are work daily like my daily work include i work on projects contributing to next generation sequencing which is nothing but we develop um many assays and uh, solutions which is uh, mainly focused on improving women health and others to be honest in my opinion many students think that coming to abroad or other foreign countries is so difficult task but it's more over like a child's play so i think i can uh, tell how it worked for me and all of my friends can discuss here so that in a way you can understand understand everything it's not like so difficult and so that's what about me Uh, thank you, Miss Kavita. It's uh, uh, good to hear about uh, your career at the uh, United States of America. So, I guess the other panelists are facing some kind of technical uh, difficulties. Uh, we are just working on with them. And before that, like you know, uh, to keep the uh, panel going on. So, I would like to know, like you know, uh, I did. uh here they uh, both of our panelists so with us right now uh, mr satish and ms kavita you both have been a uh, scholarship awardees right so one has got the scholarship from the taiwanese government the other one has got it from the university if i'm not wrong so can we uh, discuss about that in bits for now so like well, how was your experience you know uh, i i'm pretty sure have seen uh, you know uh, mr satish applying for the scholarships from our university itself so can you just brief us about the process and how it was yeah okay 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 nitish so um, uh the scholarship process uh, for achieving the taiwanese ministry of education scholarship uh, which is called MOE uh this scholarship is quite prestigious um and the topmost scholarship provided from the government of ministry of education from taiwan uh for this scholarship uh i came to know through uh, an event uh high education event where the taiwan embassy tecc uh hosted uh in chennai i remember uh where councillor ma'am uh invited few of the members uh from all the departments if i'm not wrong yeah all the department students were invited to join the uh, that event uh in that event we were uh, we came to know about this scholarship uh, where later uh, during my final year um councilor ma'am insist- insisted me to apply for this scholarship where though i wasn't ready to apply for this scholarship uh because uh i was uh quite busy with my final year project so uh i took a time to see the guidelines where, which i would be discussing in the later session of the panel uh so uh i somehow uh managed uh to fill it the form uh and uh, during the journey of four years of my engineering at mgr um i have been participated and uh, organized many international and uh, national technical non technical events which helped me a lot to uh, get uh, many things so which was a strong support uh, for me to get this scholarship and i also would like to thank uh, Uh, the OIA of MGR uh, for for this thing, yeah. Today, where I am, is because of that, yeah. So I'm grateful for that, yeah. So I I would like to sum up so, you know, the event. Yeah, the is- National Taiwan Day 
what he was talking about is national yeah. taiwan day when he was participated along with cyril sir am i right yes yeah 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 yes yes and i i guess we also had one event after that where we had our uh, taiwan uh, you know uh, M- ms general counselor you know he came in mm-hmm. and he was also like you know with his presence we also had a discussion on the taiwan scholarship yeah. program so i yeah. cannot run from the year 2018 or 2019 yeah yeah so we'll come back to that do again you peter, do you remember peter lee Italy. Yes, uh, sorry, sir, I didn't remember. <laughs> good, good, good. Please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. So yeah, now uh, coming to Miss Kavita. So this was like now we have heard how the Taiwanese government scholarship works. Now, you know, maybe your perspective on how the university scholarships for US works. Yeah, so there are many different scholarships. Uh, I think uh, when in, people think of coming to US, the first thing they think about is funding. So that's where people are stuck and they're not ready to proceed. To be honest, all the universities, nearly most of the universities at any tier universities have different scholarships in US. So when I came in, I got a scholarship like uh, there were many different types of scholarship which depends on your performance in bachelors and also it also depends on uh, how your professors recommend you from bachelors in my case i got good number of letter of recommendations which was sufficient to prove that uh, this university in us can fund me scholarship and um, i uh, we, we have a scholarship called hawks uh, mm-hmm. this one was really important but i was not able to get that to be honest uh, that scholarship was like 50% waiver of your tuition fee so people think like coming to us they're spending so much and 50% is really half of it and uh, they can make use of it i think most of the universities have that kind of scholarship and also for people working on campus they get a teaching assistant or research assistant so for them most of the universities give up to 40% scholarship waiver in their tuition fee and also they may they are getting paid so when cyril raj uh, sir talked uh, initially he said that uh, uh, like mgr university president uh, dr arun kumar is uh, f- trying to fund them from first semester itself which is really really good so when we were there i think it was not there but it's really excited to hear uh, like hear that kind of opportunities and student can make use of that to come here and then like they can switch on to scholarships available here okay mm-hmm. that's quite uh, interesting you know the uh, university scholarships and definitely our uh, mj university funding the students to go expo and get those exposure right from first year that now that's something yeah. which i don't think like much of the universities you know uh, they do it and which i university yeah i think you know. uh, i have heard like no universities from india funding students to send here but this is like really really good and students can make use of it through the alumni like and also other panelists and i think kausalya ma'am can guide them as satish said so it's really great opportunity and it's golden as well yeah so yeah i would like also to add a, a point over here you know to all the audience like uh, so i graduated last year and the people whom i contacted when i wanted to know about going abroad and studying were actually the two people who are here right now with us like uh, Sat- mr satish and ms kavita so i got insights from them so i do validate well, i am a example for the audience like you know you have a good alumni base at mgi university and that's really supportive not just inside your country but even outside your country you know it's not like you graduate you leave it's still how much connected you are with the university and with the uh, your peer friends so going on to the next question like you know uh are there different kinds of scholarships or anything like uh, so miss kavita she mentioned that there was two two three kinds of uh, scholarships so uh mr sadish like i would like to hear from you like are there any other kind of scholarships that the uh, students can try 
Yeah, um, I'll be more specific uh, for the scholarship provided from the Taiwan government. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, in Taiwan presently, there are two kinds of scholarship. Uh, one is for the higher education, which is called MOU scholarship. And the other one is for mm-hmm. language learning scholarship, uh, which is also quite uh, in demand uh, for studying Mandarin. So as of now, as I have already received uh, MOU scholarship, um, uh, if though I'm going to uh, extend uh, my higher education to do uh, PhD programs, uh, I can still apply for the MOE. Uh, if at all, I have a higher chance to receive that, uh, I'll be still eligible as I already received MOE for studying my master's. So the students can, um, the scholarship uh, benefits are same for the studying masters as well as uh, for the PhD programs. So, and uh, this scholarship is, I think, uh, limited only to masters and studying PhD programs. Okay. And coming to the uh, language learning is also a quite uh, good scholarship uh, where they provide uh the assessment course criteria are all same uh yeah okay great so we i do still have few more questions to ask but then uh, we have got our other okay. panelists joining us after the uh, technical glitch which we were facing so you know let's go to them a bit and then we'll come back to this discussion because scholarships are something important that i feel like all our audience are looking forward to so uh now going to the european continent okay we have uh, uh miss revati miss revati can you brief introduce yourself to our audience please Everything, must everything. Like, are you there? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope everything is clear now. Yeah. You're perfect. Okay. So, uh, sorry, Nitish. Can you, you know, ask me again because I did not. I was figuring out <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. Can you share us, us, uh, you know, your interesting success story? So we have all other panelists who have just done a graduate degree abroad, but you are an exemption over here. You have done your graduate (laughs) as well as doing your PhD right now in abroad. So like two degrees, like how is it? Don't you have the fees and all those stuff? You know, it's something, we'll go through that later, but still, we won't get into it. Okay, so, Yeah. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. So I I am from actually my native, uh, my name is Revati. Okay, and my native is from Velour. But then I was born and raised in uh, New Delhi. So my home is there. And from there, after my biology and science and stuff in my high school, I decided to do my biotechnology. In MGR University, uh, from my dad's, uh, you know, he 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 badly wanted to join MGR University. He has he has a very keen uh, interest, and he says that it's a good university. So I joined there, and uh, I started. Maybe I took very. Um, you know, I had no basics and I had no idea about biotechnology and stuff. But then I decided that okay, you know, uh, I'll go with the flow and I'll learn about. I had little interest in biology, so I thought I will do. And then uh, it went on and it went on and you know, with uh, mentorship in NGR University, particularly in our biotech department, uh, be it Kausalya Ma'am, be it Arun Sir, and you know, Kamakshi Ma'am. I think at that time we had uh, Kamakshi Ma'am. And also our HOD, ma'am, and and uh, I think I uh, they were always you know motivating us um, not only for the academic side but also as like sometimes when you are like doing bad in your personal thing. So it, it was nice to have, and that that's how my four years of biotechnology went. And I was a little bit serious in the uh, third year and then final year because first two years I had no idea, and then. This uh, third and fourth year, uh, I really got a 
interest and then i studied i i was a little bit um, focusing more about it and then i realized that okay maybe i should do masters in that maybe i will you know get more clarity and i'll become a master in that so i decided uh, to do my um, masters in uh, abroad so i came across i i actually wanted to go for you know some english speaking country but then uh, somehow i found that there is a scholarship opportunity in italy that's how i ended uh, ended up coming here and uh, i i tried many countries uh, like germany beat france or something like that and then uh, i got to know that injar university has a tie up with um, um, uh, with the university Uh, with the italian university and also a uh, good agency so that's how i got to know about them and i tried to apply there and i came here in italy and then everything went on i uh, i was already in a culture shock i studied i learned many things uh, i finished my graduation like you know more or less in 2 years and then after a lot of experience and struggle now i got uh, into a phd end of the masters uh, i had no idea but i wanted to do phd now i'm getting a phd i think it's it's uh, people say that getting a phd is difficult but i think now sustaining in phd will be the most uh, you know will be the most difficult thing to do so that's i won't say it's my success story but i will just say it's, it's this is what i'm doing so it's uh, i still have more maybe you know after three or four years i will be saying that okay this is my success story <laughs> so i'm just still in a progress okay this is my introduction okay. and uh, i wish i wish to i wish to you know thanks to you nitish moderator and you know giving a good presentation about an introduction about uh, us uh, the panelists and also cyril raj uh, professor and also mr ramesh sir kausalya ma'am for you know conducting this and you know contacting us that okay you should be a part of this thank you <laughs> yeah so uh, that was a lot of information for <laughs> so but then uh, you know <laughs> but it, it's quite inspiring <laughs> to see like Uh, all of our panelists have been to your countries with scholarships, so I'll come back to your scholarship in the further rounds. So for now, yeah. uh, I guess our other panelists is, have uh, is again facing some issues with the internet connectivity. So you know, so let's not wait. Like we'll go back to him later. So uh, why don't we uh, share uh, your opinions on the topic, like you know, higher education job opportunities in foreign countries? Like you know, when we got the call stating that this is the topic, so what was the first thing that came to your mind? In a gist. Okay. Uh, see. Okay. Comparing to in our place, you know, uh, obviously mm-hmm. everyone knows. I'll be brutally honest. Okay. Uh, seriously, mm-hmm. I'll be brutally honest. What's the situation there and what's the situation here? Everyone knows that the population is a little bit higher. you know mm-hmm. uh, in in our country and here there is it's a little bit less so if you uh, consider it that way uh, mm-hmm. there is opportunity for sure opportunities are everywhere but the competition mm-hmm. is higher compared to uh, here in european country or beat any western countries so i would say you have the opportunity but it also depends on you how you work and how you you know um sustain in that particular place and how much skills you have and how much you know how 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 uh, how much of experience you perform and you implement in your work so that depends a lot but i would say yes opportunities are there it's there everywhere you you see the opportunities you just have to be you know keep on applying keep on doing and keep on working on your skills and not losing hope yes So true, like true. choose your stream so, perfectly and compete the most effective, and you can win it. That's something I could summarize. Yes, exactly. You you milk out all exactly. You should milk out all your you know uh, okay, sure. everything whatever is possible like full capacity. You have to milk out and you have to proceed and I mean you have to show your you literally have to sell yourself. to the company or to the job description or wherever you're going if you if you want something you should just go and tell them that okay i need this and that's how uh, i think that's how it works and i've been doing this i i preferably 
i don't plan that okay i should i should break the rules but some or the other way you know it's like you are breaking the rule and you're yeah. going and you're okay you are attaining it so it depends on the personality and it depends on the perspective how you see the things yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah that's uh, that's perfectly true and the uh, we can see the your heart should be important to get your phd yeah. so it's we'll coming to you uh, we'll he'll come yeah. back to you we have a lot to talk <laughs> because of this yeah yeah sure sure <laughs> sure for that like sure, sure. let me ask your opinion of uh, the people on two extreme ends of the world <laughs> okay uh, first can we have it from ms kavita like so what's the first thing that came to your mind when you heard the topic higher education and job opportunities in foreign countries Uh, so right now uh, i was thinking what would the current students think about this topic <laughs> we had it because when i was in bachelor's i had no idea of what i was doing and what i was going through the mm-hmm. first like four or even six semesters i would say i had no clear idea what, of what i was doing i know i was taking my semesters getting grades and going through it but maybe final year something popped up we have to do something at that time i decided to do masters and you know coming to masters again again everyone will think it's so really hard that we can't get a position i would say give it a try because even for as revathi mentioned market yourself as much as possible even for a biscuit or for a cookies we have seen like so much of ad and tv they market themselves why not market yourself to get into a position which is going to change your life honestly yeah. to be honest everyone and like being panelist you know what level you were in 2 years back and what level you are in now and what level you will be in 2 years from now so yeah. it's definitely uh, it's not a hard hard thing um we can give it try because uh, even 2 days back i had a call from junior saying that uh, uh if i can uh, i'm not sure if i can repay the loan uh, us is like a big country i don't know how much i have to spend she was bit scared i was like give it a try and you have many funding opportunities where you can jump in and you can apply for everything and you can for sure you can repay it very soon like very soon very soon as soon as, soon as you graduate coming to the job opportunities like i am not sure about uh, uh, other streams maybe about mechanical or other streams uh, satish can answer but to be honest biotech has a very good job opportunity and you will be learning everything new to be um, so i am in my like fourth or fifth month month of my work job and like i I've, i've been exposed to so much of uh, like current projects and trends mm-hmm. where it is not available in other countries so it's like a overwhelming uh, experience for me to get hands on experience and to gain more knowledge every day i go to work i gain something important and that's where i feel that even bachelors and masters and uh, i would like to thank mj university at this point for giving a strong foundation in the basics but still after coming to masters i learned a lot and a lot because the education system was entirely different and gaining more hands on experience when compared to there obviously and now going to work it's like they don't teach us they'll make us to do that's what is the difference even in us education system or in italy or everywhere the education system is they don't spoon feed us they like <laughs> they screw us to do the work so that's how our potential comes out i think peer pressure is more important so it's good that when you put yourself into pressure give it a try and you'll easily get it you'll be one among the panelists sitting next year or next year here and talking now you'll be attendees and obviously for sure next year you'll be one among the panelists sitting and talking as like like us saying that coming to abroad is easy that's my opinion about the topic so like uh, ms kavita you gave out uh... Uh, an awesome topic that we can actually discuss of one as uh, you know the education system so maybe we'll come that uh, you know come to that topic but before that let's hear from mr satish so what was yeah. his opinion on this topic yeah when i heard this topic as i've heard this topic and even uh, this topic is quite familiar to me because i've attended a lot of uh, events with this topic during when i was uh, at mgr so mm-hmm. and now again uh, as a panel member 
and giving uh, a talk on the same topic it's quite uh, uh, happy to share my uh, views experience and uh, uh, yeah on the topic because coming to the topic higher education this is very important uh, to the people to the not uh, to the students uh, irrespective of what year they are but mm-hmm. if you have the hope uh and courage uh determination to study higher education uh please go forward and uh choose the uh choose your uh the motivation not uh, the course um and do some research where and what you want to do uh and please don't uh uh take uh like yeah people talk negative around you like uh you cannot get it you won't be it's very different it's very difficult and uh, many factors affect your uh, health because uh, at that motion uh, uh, the situation where you will be uh, dealing with your final year project and many other things uh, but you need to focus on um, uh, what at at the at the end of the day what you are achieving and what you are what is your take away uh you need to ke- keep a daily track on it uh as such uh, when you enter your final year uh, i think you need to be more clear on your goals um what you want to do and uh, choose with what course what uh, specific region where you want to do um maybe it's mechanical electronics biotech uh, anything because the pop- the demand for each uh, major uh it goes up down people say this is more higher demand this market is high uh, but uh, when uh, speaking to your heart what you are like to do please go forward for it and do some research on the, the same please because of others views you don't change your goal i i, I really um, uh, uh make a highlight for this sentence because at the end you uh, you are the one who will be running forward uh to achieve that the thing so be positive on your track and uh, do the research uh on the how to enter because entry ticket is very difficult for in each thing even if this for job or as for higher education once yeah. you reach, get the entry ticket you'll shine like a star so yeah yeah that's uh, you know uh, quite <laughs> interesting and want to be thing you know yeah all of us would have faced the same thing you know right from school you know we would have been said like yeah this is just and you just need to cross it you know you get into yes. 12th it's going you know getting into 12th getting your favorite group was again a barrier then so we all broke that yeah. we came to college and then the same in for university and now you know that's something that's coming up is you know something of that sort but do as you wish and you can succeed i guess that's something which all the three panelists you know have shared with us so uh, you know i guess it's you know a uh, different time zones in different places right yeah so let's start from the evening of the day at 6 pm of the day from taiwan if i'm not wrong yeah so uh, yeah Bro, uh, what do you uh, how different is the education system in taiwan like what does a student who's gonna apply for taiwan gonna experience you know when we say higher education and you know uh, when we say higher education what thought comes from mind is like is it gonna be easy for us it's gonna be difficult or like why is it gonna be difficult or easy like in what sense it's different you know maybe mm-hmm. on some points yeah. on that mm-hmm. um i'll start from my experience itself when i was in third year um i was i got selected for an event which was uh in taiwan actually that's called um uh, iicc uh where uh, uh like uh, i was uh, luckily got selected for that event where there were many candidates for that event uh, to participate so i think uh, that event was quite uh, eye opening for me to get a few tips about the education system in taiwan uh, that event uh, where i was along with uh, 
professor arun sir uh, and uh, professor rajeshwari ma'am so it was uh, like i was with them for 15 days uh, where we were uh, uh, like uh, uh, understanding the system like how they what is their culture and how what is the system and how they do what what is the difference and what makes them a uh, level higher uh, in terms of their system so that that event particular event uh, uh, got me to uh, to here to study masters in taiwan uh, where the masters uh, in taiwan uh, is more specific is like uh, is like they also follow same like us so uh, and more like japanese culture where they are very disciplined punctual um on time and uh, the submission dates for assignments and all uh, more like uh, uh, more punctual yeah so it was very initially difficult for me to meet the deadlines but <laughs> then uh, i somehow cope uh, cope up with that and uh, uh experimented myself to to either i'm like because all are more like uh uh practical things when you come to study masters the research topic you need to choose what research topic you need to uh you are more interested in because as i am in mechanical department a uh, mechanical major uh mechanical major has many uh sub topics of research where you need to take maybe fluid dynamics uh, moe ms microelectromechanical systems and many other uh, like bio application based so as my interest was more uh, in the field of uh, fluid dynamics so um, i i learned the many skills which i was i couldn't uh, learn in india either in my uh, college or university uh, but then uh, Uh, the skills are skill set skill assets are more important when you are studying masters in the, uh, but more particularly uh, develop it in uh, the first year itself so that in the second year you are more easy to apply those softwares or any things and uh, it will be more clear for you yeah i don't know it's quite like you have been inspired by one initiative like you know that you have took during your undergraduate and uh, you know i yeah. MJ, you know yeah, again supported for that and you i i, I could recollect that was a fully funded uh, uh yeah know, yeah competition right yeah yeah so yeah that's uh, I, think, yeah, i need to thank uh, like mgr for the like for that event and uh, because that was that event was the peak for me to know understand uh, the taiwanese education system and motivate me so that i can choose taiwan as my country of study uh, and i think taiwan coming to study in taiwan is more easy and if any of the students and we have a separate group for that tosela ma'am have made a separate whatsapp group for that where because uh, suresh uh, and myself were very like we are eagerly waiting like mgr students to welcome to taiwan study <laughs> higher education and yeah. like, in what field i would like they... to <laughs> i would like to add one more point uh, satish in the same event uh, dr rajeshwari ha- hari have uh, received the award of 5000 mtd also yeah 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 as for judging the event uh, am i right yeah, yeah. okay yes. and in 2020 also two of our students have received the taiwan scholarship uh, oh. one is a biotech alumni uh, ms pratiksha and uh, csd department alumni ms uh, naim satka okay they have received it okay thank you dear so they are they they are continuing their studies ma'am here yeah uh, oh, let okay. me tell you because due to covid last year it was at the peak right hence the parents were not living after receiving the scholarship they left <laughs> they are been awarded okay so it seems like uh, mj university uh, students have been performing you know outstandingly and it's kind of vivid in these kind of situations you know though at 
times we know it's a good performance but when it comes to these kind of scholarships and competitions it becomes vivid to the whole world right so that's for the strong view now uh, let's go to the place where it's off or maybe like around one o'clock in the noon somewhere of that sort in the europe if i'm not wrong so can we have uh miss revati to say the european education system and uh, so the, the question which i asked the yeah, rest of the speakers which i didn't ask you was mm-hmm. about your scholarship so yeah. like to know about that yeah. as well scholarships education system within this um okay i will maybe start with the education system here and then go for the scholarship part coming to the education system here completely different okay what i have studied in i see a great variation when i studied my school in delhi when i studied my school high school in chennai and then my you know bachelor's in mgr chennai as well but then there is like there's a lot of variations okay because they speak um, i mean you know in, in in delhi we have a different language and the teaching style is different it was a cbsc school and even here it was cbsc but it's it has a uh, you know different concept of yeah. all the education but it's still it's in it's an indian education system okay even that you uh, even that i felt like okay it's huge different and uh, you know it's very difficult to cope up and uh, adjust everything and you know you have to learn and then you're already in a, some other state you're moving around but then when i went to europe and uh, that to for masters it was not even like high school or it was not a bachelor's so i i saw that the foundation is uh, very strong there with the students and uh, almost i think nobody is okay to receive an average score you know and you they have a student elective programs and student can fix their own timetable and you know most of most of the university has this a uh, student can fix their own uh, schedule and they can uh, fix the timetable and you know they can also change the semester exams if you are planning to break the semester for for a while and then you know you take a break or you you want to work or if you want to go for an internship or something you can take a break it's not uh, like you have to you know if you don't finish your semester and uh, you can you cannot uh, do anything or you are you are retained there detained there or something like that so you don't have that option you plan your studies the bachelor's is uh, beat for 3 years or beat for 4 years but and uh, just like i think kavita said they'll make you they'll they'll screw you as much as possible that you study and i think they will uh, see they know what is our potential i i don't I, i don't think what i saw i thought i'm going to fail in all of my exams because i was in very average kavita knows very well i was a very average student in mgr okay only in my final years i started i got buckled up and i was like okay i will study something <laughs> so only in the final year i studied so it was very difficult for me to um, you know uh, to study all the basics and to cope up with them but i would say that yes the education just system is very strong and they it's good it's good and coming to the scholarship uh, i would say there are many uh, opportunities mm-hmm. uh, people uh, often people contact me you know most of them are juniors and um, be it from our university or friends of friends or some mutual friends of mine they are very scared first to come out of you know to uh, the country and they're like oh my parents will not allow me oh this is like very huge money how will i like what how the, 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 i think kavita and satish said that okay you, you know it's very hard to pay the you know i think even even you have done a lot of effort to come there to the us right you have put uh, you, i mean with the study loan so i think people are not ready to um, you know i understand there are so many issues with their um, personal issues personal reasons but then you know it's better if you come out of your home and you try out uh, and you know you come out of your comfort zone and you apply somewhere and you study for a while for one year or two years program and then uh, and you because you have a lot of opportunities here um, be it europe 
be it any country in germany also you have a good uh, scholarship you don't have tuition fees in italy you don't have tuition fees you have zero tuition fees it's just what hardly you have to pay for an enrollment um, fees which is around uh, if you uh, convert it back to indian rupees it's just what 15000 to 13000 and for each university it differs uh, and you know you get i got uh, i got uh, 500 euro scholar 5000 euro scholarship per year and uh, i was in my masters program for 2 years and apart from that when you graduate on time you get a separate uh, money for that it's like a reward reward for you so i got 1200 euros so it's like you have so many opportunities uh, not only in italy in germany and beat france and now i'm in lithuania now i'm doing my phd program here okay and in meanwhile i can go for an internship program so it's called basically in um, europe it's called erasmus program okay and in erasmus program um, meanwhile when you are studying uh, your bachelor's or masters any degree program you can take uh, an internship in between which can uh, which you can take from 2 months to 1 year time period and you will get an allowance from the university per month depending upon the country where you choose so it's like you have n number of options uh, i think it's like um, it's a very little time uh, if i mm-hmm. have to talk about scholarship it, it's not enough it's not enough yeah. so f- for sure so, but i would really suggest i don't know how many people are watching it right now but i would really suggest you know if you are if you think if someone is thinking that okay I, maybe i can do a masters program just come out i know it's difficult the process is difficult you know you have a culture shock you come out of the place you you don't know what's happening outside come out you will figure out you you will figure it out you will not die end of the day you will not die you will just come out and you'll you'll see what's happening and you will have a different perspective about studying and everything so yeah for sure you will learn a lot i learned a lot in these 3 years of time period so i would really suggest you know if you have any doubts i think all the panelists will agree with me that they will help out i think they are already helping out so many you know juniors so i think please whoever junior is watching please contact us if you have any doubts <laughs> yeah that's it so i is like uh, yeah I, i totally agree with uh, what you have said you know yeah. obviously all panelists uh, definitely help our juniors and even yeah. this one you know uh, when you say you know with scholarships and you will not have abundant of time i like to mention like you see a uh, european union is one huge continent and it's like you have different uh, opportunities and you have yeah. experienced it in two different countries so which sums up like you yeah. you have a lot of resources that could be uh, shared with uh, people as well yeah. so maybe we can you know discuss about it in depth in the yeah, sure. uh, later half of the uh, yeah. panel discussion yeah sure for that let's uh, yeah, hear sure, it sure. from uh, let's hear it from our uh, panelist host in the us luckily we both had the same time so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, miss kavita can we uh, hear it from you so like you know what's the educational system difference that you seen in our know, resources in india though you have mentioned just about it priya one i would like to know something in depth so you know what do you say like the marking grading systems or something of that sort yeah bro mm-hmm. so when it when it comes to education system it's it's going to be really really hard to hit you you'll be crying to finish your assignments and there are very strict deadlines so yeah. <laughs> if your deadline is 12 o'clock and you submit on 12 1 you're dead <laughs> you're going to get no marks for the, that assignments that's how strict here but we are being pampered in india we were being pampered will be like even for kausalya ma'am sometime i'll be like finishing the assignment late and going submitting <laughs> she'll be so nice ah kavita give it's okay <laughs> they are so nice but here still my professors are nice but they have really really strict deadlines i remember finishing my like assignment 5 or 10 minutes late and they'll be giving zero grades i'll be like hey my bachelor's professors are so sweet <laughs> like, it's only 10 minutes late ma'am please ma'am no wait. we are not giving this for you so i remember ma'am being sweet to us and giving extra deadlines i'll give one more day go and finish and come back so that that pampering we definitely miss here ma'am <laughs> so and uh, and then grading system so we don't have semester exams straight away 
will be given 10 like more over 5 to 10 assignments where the cumulative will be grading uh, like uh, graded as our semester and also the average level they have been increased so uh, in india if it's like 50% is your average that you have to pass here it's like 80 or 85 some professors even mm-hmm. hike them up to 90 so <clears throat> getting a a grade is the only way that you have to clear so it's really hard but i would say the first semester you would struggle and then you'll be getting a good group of friends to do group study and also like getting help with assignments on the other hand there is something called plagiarism checker <laughs> everywhere that's where they keep check to us you can't <laughs> copy it from google then no so we have to really really work hard um, I, i would say the first semester i was like i'm not going to i'm not even ge- going to get a grades and i'll be sitting here or i'll be going back to india that's what i thought in the beginning of the first semester but eventually after uh, it took nearly 6 months like a whole semester for me to get adapted into this education system where we have to give focus on every week it's not about reading all like all five chapters at the end of the semester and giving your exams it's like reading 20 pages of a chapter for a week and then giving your maximum out of it because if it's 90 is your pass then you have to get 90 no other way you are going to get pass so that was really difficult but to be honest once you come here you'll be thinking of your family other stuffs you have you'll have so much of peer pressure to finish and that pressure would definitely help you to clear your assignments and at the end you'll be like yeah i finished the assignment and i have got like i've got a grade i know nitish uh, you are in your first semester and how you are uh, you can share your thoughts right like how you are like you're yeah, struggling I actually, or <laughs> yeah i was actually thinking of finding a point right you know you know see uh, as i came here it's just been like uh, two months now and already i'm half way through my courses again so i i guess i'm pretty much i can add up to uh, to it so uh, no the assignments were difficult yeah uh, the plagiarism checker yes that was scary at the beginning and that's when i realized when i got my first assignment you don't have anything to copy okay being honest <laughs> you would not get answers anywhere on the internet until you got to solve it on your own so you need not fear about plagiarism checker at all <laughs> so that's the first thing so next thing how long will it take to adapt i guess it takes just three assignments you are done like first assignment neck to neck second assignment you won't finish third assignment you will be conscious this time you will finish it like couple of days ahead of your deadline the fourth assignment you will finish it way way ahead of the deadline you will have at least like almost 80 percentage of the time period awaiting for you and that's how it has been happening for me and that's how i am in my <laughs> assignment i've already done with my assignment which is like 10 days from now for submission so i guess like yeah you will get used to it within just 4 weeks Four yeah, the four same days. way. <laughs> yeah, it's the same way how we all like went through. Uh, yeah. The toughest part was assignments during my first semester. You have to take like endless coffee streaks to put yourself uh, like stay awake all night because yeah. I'll be like I have one week to complete my assignments and I'll be four days enjoying outside and other <laughs> three days I'll be like struggling with the assignments <laughs> to finish. Later on, I realized that that one week is an ample amount of time that I have to utilize. I- with the very first so that i can sort the answers at the beginning like at the end of like sixth or seventh day before the deadline so i would say f- first semester is is going to be a little hard but you would easily yeah first few months and um, you'll have other responsibility as well because coming from home you'll be pampered here you have to cook you have to eat you have to do your stuffs on your own and you have you'll also have like something called home sickness you'll be crying to go back home and everything will you will be hitting you hard but after coming it's going to be there for a week maybe a couple of months and after that you're going to have a really fantastic life and you'll never regret yeah. uh, like coming like going abroad you'll be you'll literally enjoy it and every moment you'll be like this is the best decision i have made yeah so that's what yeah so like you know no uh, back stepping Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't be able to even think about it after coming here. Like even if the thought comes you're like okay we have come here. 
<laughs> it costs so much to go back rather than staying here as much <laughs> So and uh, the other thing is uh, you will be like independent and learning more stuff like uh, trying to handle things on your own i feel like myself after coming here i become more independent instead of going and asking my mom and dad for everything now we are like i can do it on my own let it try now we are giving suggestions for them so you'll be grown up and uh, like really you can able to like uh, model yourself into a better person i guess that sums up almost the life of everyone who is uh, you know doing their higher education or staying abroad right now our friends yeah and i guess you know uh, something that i was able to summarize from all the three of you or from myself uh, to include and that like you know going through all those three rounds of questions one thing is that uh, you know mj has did play a significant role in all of our lives maybe you know getting the admission or helping us with the admissions like lors and you know documentation so the scholarship opportunities giving up the information and stuff and next thing is that uh, you know i could see you all like growing up so much like you know the way uh, you, know, you guys have been uh, replaying us you know like for me personally i have known mr satish from college so i could see the exponential growth or the difference in uh, how he is today and how he was during the college age. so i'm so happy to see all this so you know now uh, going on to the next round round 4 like all this time we didn't mention this which round we are in but no <laughs> let me mention we are in round 4 so let's so i got like you know a few questions i interacted with my junior so i got like around uh three to four questions and i curated it for each and one of you now so i want like quick answers i don't want like too long let i want some quick answers because we got a lot of things to discuss i suppose so uh so first let me start with uh, mr satish yeah how to choose the perfect course the perfect university and the perfect country for you no know, like how do i get it like whom do i ask or whom do i see or what should i think about before i do all this what kind of research i should do i think in in a in a one line i would like to say there is nothing called perfect uh, to choose okay. all the three factors because okay. uh, uh because this factors uh depends on the individual who want to do what actually because um if you if your character is like this like if you are uh, more like a uh, non veg eater i would like to, to welcome to taiwan because <laughs> yeah i welcome them to come to taiwan they will be happily enjoying and studying for they are uh, uh, focusing on academics because uh, because studying academics doesn't uh, only doing academics is not because you need to deal with many other factors like mental health mental health your physical health and uh, all the homesick this factors will be affecting your uh, in, in, at the initial for 6 months you need to settle adapt know know the system uh, and all but as uh, mj alumni are in all the locations all over the globe so i think we all are there to help them uh, wherever they go so i think that that's not a big deal so but uh, just make a decision like where you need to study what what you want to study because in in um, in mgr itself if you are in uh, for example mechanical uh, or electronics or ele- electrical uh, contact the chodis be be talk to them what what you feel like to doing what research area you you are more interesting in for example in if you are in final year if you are taking uh, some projects related to Automa- automation or maybe fluid dynamics or cfd something like that uh, uh check the expertise in india like uh, wherever maybe in uh, in our college itself uh, professors are there to help you talk to them about uh, what are the current demands what are the current uh, uh, research areas where are more interesting for you to uh, develop and what are the skill assets you need to do 
make uh, make a checklist of those uh, things uh, in the third year itself uh, because uh, uh, even the cgpa is also important plays important role so balance your academics as well as uh, other things uh, and learn to make a checklist uh, and uh, do uh, study your, yourself uh, it's like like how you were in first year and how you are going to in second year third year final year um and at the end of the final year you will be uh, getting the solution for your higher studies like what you want to do what you need to achieve it you will be more clear enough uh at the end but just uh wait for uh wait for it wait for the time patience is also important when you are uh, going to study uh in uh, in any of the countries and uh, do some because academics you will be studying because if you are good at academics you will manage to hit hard achieve more good more good uh, in that field but surviving is also an important factor where you need to keep check on it uh if uh, coming to if taiwan if you want to study in taiwan where you need to know uh, how the taiwan what are the internal politics here and what things you need to care care about and uh, uh, because taiwan have many good universities so you need to choose what university you need and what professor what field of research you need to do uh, for example because uh, for mechanical mechanical is a vast vast topic so for there are many sub topics in it so there are many uh, kind of uh, research areas where, where um uh, comes under mechanical field so i think uh, taiwan has uh, good opportunities for mechanical as well as uh, electrical uh, so i think uh, there is a good scope of uh, to achieve in this field if you are interested and moreover uh, uh, your culture your culture If you are free enough there is no any boundaries of your culture you can you are purely welcome you purely come to taiwan to study because oh. th- studying itself is not easy but then you need to balance the dealing with your situation like you need to uh, like uh, do assignments by your own and not to share no cut copy paste and uh, no this things no no just follow the protocols where you are just follow it and uh, yeah you will be learning it you will be learning yeah so uh, that sums up like uh, you know what are the research that uh, you have also done so you have shared that as well uh, yeah. with our peer audience so uh, let me go to the next panelist now with a question i have miss kavita with this question like how can i fund my education So I'm gonna come and study in the US. So we know that US is expensive. So if I'm gonna come there and study, how will I able be uh, fund my education? Yeah. So initially, when uh, like students think of their education abroad, their top most priority would be funding. Obviously, mm-hmm. when I see ten, like when I compare ten, ten of students, really nine of them are hesitant about funding. There are many funding options available right mm-hmm. now in India. i have heard that even like uh, banks like government banks in india are funding students sending abroad they can take those like they can make use of it and uh, uh, apart from that i would definitely recommend everyone to apply scholarships like don't think about your cgpa or whatever you have cgpa is definitely an important criteria but still there are many other things other than that if you are going to take uh, you are going to f- focus more on genetics so the council that is going to choose you would be searching for your genetics mark instead of your overall cgpa so in that case if you get good marks in certain subjects like core subjects they are going to definitely offer you scholarship and there are also other uh, things like that comes into account when uh, scholarship is funded so once you get scholarship your tuition fee or other things will be like really really down but uh, the first stage would be like i would say apply for scholarship when you are in india and before that apply for funding and you might think when applying for funding 
there might be several questions. The main thing is, what if I can't repay my loan? I would assure that you can repay your loan within a year or two. It depends on how good you work and with consistent work consistently, get a job. And if you get a job, you'll be like not thinking about your loan anymore. Still, you'll be thinking about it for a year or so. But still, Definitely. it's not a big deal. I would say students must just overcome that fear. Uh, some like even I was hesitant to think, what if I can't repay my loan after finishing my uh, master's? What I'm going to put my parents into trouble, ending up without repaying my loan. But no worries, that will never happen. And job market in US is really, really good. Biotech, I can assure as soon as they graduate, they'll get a job. No, like I have really like 20 of my team, like my classmates who graduated masters with me, all of us got placed within one month of graduation with a good, like uh, in good companies and also in very good universities where they provide, like even after you get a job, if you're ready to do PhD, they are ready for like funding. Even companies do that and they offer uh, ample amount for your research, like personal studies, if, if you want to improve yourself. So there are many opportunities and don't hesitate to take funding from India, like by getting a loan or something, you will definitely be able to repay it very soon. And I guess that's what, and uh, when it comes to expense, it also depends on which university you choose and the place you live in. For example, uh, Nitish is living in Chicago and I myself in Houston. Uh, so two different cities. It's like one person living in Chennai, like very hottest, like very expensive, like like uh, compare Ananagar somewhere and the other one is living somewhere near Poonamalli. Obviously the rent and other utilities. I'm not sure about the expense, like, but here, even certain state have taxes and whatever food you get have extra ta taxes compared to Houston, Chicago is like a bit expensive. So it depends on how much like funding and other stuff, how much you get depends on the place you choose. So initially I would be saying that like make sure <coughs> where you're going to go, which university and where it is located and how much expense will it cost and go for funding according to that and see all the available scholarship options in your university and apply for it. So that's the best option. Yeah. Uh, thank <coughs> mm -hmm. you, Ms. Kavita, and uh, briefing up about the, you know, uh, the funding opportunities. Yeah, I would actually like to add one point when you, uh, you know, came up with the difference in cities between uh, Chicago and Houston. Uh, you know, one important point which I would really like to add over here is that whenever you take a look on which city do look on to the climatic conditions of yeah the well. <laughs> honestly i'm not a cold person i know chicago is like freaking cold you'll get like six feet of snow in winter but in houston it's like okay okay i can handle and yeah. weather plays an important role also when you're going to choose universities make sure how was winter and summer i think most of us can handle because summer would be more over like chennai okay. and places around okay. that but okay. winter is going to hit really hard where it might put you into depression don't go into that because just because of winter so that's really useful one Nitish. yeah so like uh, facing <laughs> from <laughs> So I would really recommend you guys, uh, you know, uh, the, all the audience over here to do take a look on the climatic conditions because it is also going to impact your expense. It's going to your quality of education, your quality of your time where you're going to spend on your studies and every other stuff. So uh, now coming to our panelist, Ms. Revati. Now, the question is, will I get a job? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do my master's okay. the answer is it's a significant important question it's literally everyone would have whether i come through scholarship or not yeah. at the end of the day will i get a job okay. or not <laughs> okay the answer is no if you're thinking <laughs> okay. for sure no if you're thinking okay i have to i want to apply for a master's and okay i will i get a job it's obviously no because you know, you, it depends on your CV, it depends on your work experience, it depends on your whole history and whatever skills you have. So it, 
it completely depends on you if you ask me if you have opportunities uh, you know meanwhile in two years i will build up my profile and then i will you know uh, ask if you ask me that question that will i get a job yes possible there are so many possibilities that you will be getting a job because it depends on um, uh, the amount of uh, application you put and the um, uh, you know where uh, where and all you are applying so mm-hmm. it, it it really it really depends so i would not say that okay yes come here you have hundreds and hundreds you know like open positions or something but if you are ready to you know um uh, okay see a rejection because if you are planning to apply for 10 places 10 jobs and you're getting one rejection i have seen many people that they get rejected by you know the second option and the third option and then they don't plan and it, i would really say that have some patience and you know keep on applying so for sure you will get it but if you are um, approaching 50 50 uh, companies in india obviously if you approach minimum 5 or 10 companies here i am pretty sure that you will get one but it it really depends on you how interestingly you apply for that and it also depends on many factors about your internship your experience you know i think uh, kavita covered almost all of the uh, uh, criteria so you, literally you have to sell yourself you have to market yourself how much you are able to market because that the person should get to know that okay this guy is available and this guy has the smart skills and he is able to do and that's how you perform yeah, that's it that's market so. yourself in more logical way just don't just don't split, spit talk more logical sense because you sh- your talk should have some sense to the opposite person to agree to See, your okay uh, okay mhm so i am not against this satish because i have heard your <laughs> see there are so many opp- opportunities okay i have seen many people i have me- i have seen so many students uh, that you know they come is like uh, okay akka i i want to get a job okay i won't get a job okay i'm not coming i really want those people to come here okay i really yeah, want yeah. to just like you went just like how i came here and i really i really want to tell them the truth okay it's not like there are i i see many people who come here and they just go back do they go back i feel so bad they spent a lot and lot of lakhs like literally 60 to 70 lakhs they paid and they got a loan and they literally sold all of the properties and they come here and they'll be like uh, they are not trying i have seen i think this is uh, i think that's what he asked okay that's what um, what see i got a job i got a job but then i'm just saying no because if if it's a, if it's a straight question okay after your masters will i get a job obviously it's like for me okay it's a very um, crooked question because you really have to think and it really depends on you because you will be the one you will be the guy who will be sitting in front of the computer for the interview not me so it really depends on the student profile it really depends on uh, the guy profile the girl profile how they perform in the interview and how they establish their and how uh, you know how much potential they have so it really depends so uh, it's not like i even now i give a 50 50 percent uh, you know perspective i'm not telling that you will not get a job or you will get a job there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, open position there and you know for this phd position i really i got a job but then the point is i really i badly wanted to do phd i badly wanted to do mm-hmm. phd and i don't know people will believe or not as i keep i i used i keep on telling kavita that i i have applied like around 600 to 700 applications from past two years for the phd and i have uh, i have internship in lithuania for two years okay and i got a scholarship and i have pretty much a good profile but then i did not get the job because you why you will be Uh, if you will be selected in you know top 5 contestant uh, if, if you know you will be the top 5 uh, candidate even after 300 applications even if you are the top 5 there will be two or three persons okay which they have already 50 to 60 pub- paper publications and they will have three to four uh, european research experience us research experience where i am i have finished just masters okay so i am in like a very baby steps the the other the top in the, the other top five the rest of the four people will have a great candidate i mean the great cv 
so obviously if i am a recruiter i obviously i will take the guy who has a good uh, you know research experience because he knows he has been to various conferences he has published more of papers and uh, papers and he has done a lot of research experience whereas a me i i am just i'm just starting my career i just uh, people say that okay after masters you can do that i uh, maybe i i might be a little bit negative but then this is what the truth is the competition the competition is high everywhere and mm-hmm. like you said i like your point that if you you can manage if your scores are good yes true even if your score is good and uh, you know and you don't perform well in the interview if anyone you know that could be also good uh, i mean that could be also contradict uh, uh, the opinion right and if your marks are for me i am i think i am the best example i uh, my scores are too bad uh, my scores are too bad in my bachelor's okay i it's 80 percentage but then still to compare it to you uh, europe um, uh, europe universities it's a little bit low it's like an average okay and i buckled up and i studied in my masters and i have a good uh, percentage in my master but then uh, it really in all of my interviews i've asked uh, people used to ask me the interview will ask me why your score is less in your biotech do you have any you know um, opinion about it so it's the way you handle it in your interview it's the way you represent yourself so obviously if you are able to do it um, properly or um, if you are able to sell yourself nicely obviously you'll get a job so it's like uh, it's like a whole um, um you know it's like a very um, basic question will i get a job obviously you have so many opportunities so that's what i would say you people should come here and get to know and then you If you are able to sell yourself, you'll get a job. Yes. I know. So that's not saying. Sorry. Like, you know, if... <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, mm-hmm. you know, I really feel that the question, be, despite being vague, I guess it has literally yeah. hit the perfect motto of the panel discussion. We wanted to know what is the reality yeah. and what is no. That's the first thing which we exactly. also. Exactly. Yeah. So what we need to break the yeah, myths yeah. and we need to speak yeah. the truth over here. <laughs> I yeah, guess like exactly, sometimes vague exactly. questions are something that brings out the best out of all of yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. So, so, yeah, I like like I. Abroad. Yeah, you know when we yeah, also like first said moved that, abroad, you know this ample. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this one hour time is not really uh, enough uh, <laughs> to explain. Yeah. To be honest, the situation. Uh, this like uh, attend like whomever our juniors or anyone who is watching if you have doubts just go to youtube comment there we are ready to exactly. come there and answer give our personal exactly. email yeah. so call us talk yeah. to us to get more details about like which country so one is in taiwan italy us and we have friends mm-hmm. in other countries as well who we can refer so just talk to us we are just like your not seniors friends <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. i really feel bad like one of our panelists wasn't able to join with us because we would have got uh, much more insights about uh, uk and he has yeah. also passed me on some information to share which i'll uh, do it on the later stage so for now uh, you know i have a uh, few questions to ask for three of you okay are the yeah. uh, let, let's say like it's going to be kind of happy for something i don't want to name it so but still okay uh the first common question i would ask to all three of you is and something which all three of you brought up was homesickness so how do you deal with homesickness in yeah. chat bro i think before that we are getting questions in chat box as well yeah and i and one of someone is raising hands i think it's so, amen yeah So uh guys if you have uh, any doubts feel free to post it up in the chat uh, chat box I or the so, comment yeah. box someone yeah. has asked like should we go abroad or choose like top universities in india so in my case the reason i came here is i felt like the research in us com- like when it comes to research and other things research in us is more developed and they have more facilities which like in india still it's going on but it's not more developed as in us like still there are many good opportunities in india so in that case uh, it depends on the stream you choose uh, even in iit nit have really really good professors who are more talented and they can 
guide you abroad opportunities or some way they can if you we need funding and some other like for, when it compared to when it's biotech we need some instruments which are really really expensive i feel that us they get funding easily because of their they have been in research so longer even in india it's true but uh, they get funding easily and they are ready to sponsor in that case we get more exposure so it depends on the stream what you choose yeah. so like uh, one question from the audience which was like uh, you know it was from a third year student saying like you know uh, how do i get a, a, like he uh, says like he is a third year it student and now like he wants to know how to get a job but he knows very little bit of programming does it really matter for the get job get a job in us like or like get a job in india i'm not getting so it get getting a oh. job anywhere see uh in my case uh to be honest i had so many backlogs <laughs> revdi knows we both were classmates we had so much like i had so many backlogs and coming here um backlog doesn't matter because of some other situations such as visas and other things getting a job from india sitting there is bit hard because the companies are not ready to sponsor h1b as if now the like covid things and there are also other reasons like there are many uh, things that uh, that is uh, going on apart from that um, coming here doing masters and getting a job is definitely uh, quite easy because um, us has more job opportunities and be ready to market yourself you'll be facing so many so many rejections i applied to nearly 200 300 jobs and got among that i got like 10 interviews out of 10 i like i came around like five companies and among that five companies i had to choose one depending on where i have to moon all so it's like apply as much as you can and also exactly. try to get more knowledge he said that he has like less coding knowledge or something so there are many online options such as coursera or linkedin learning where you can go sit for an hour or two learn it and then you can use it so that's what i would say so like i would like to add a point to it you know something which i learned you know which one of my professor introduced us to the whole course saying this uh learn the uh, learn the skills and you can land your job simple as True. that so uh, what the question was asked like being honest you just need to master the skill if you want a job so which job are you looking for you know what so try to work on those skills and yeah so uh, we do have another a uh, couple of questions from the audience let's you know finish that up and then there is one more in chat box too yeah so that's what we'll go through those two questions um yeah yeah so okay, yeah my ultimate aim is to become a genetics engineering researcher shall i know which university and country is best for it i guess we have two biotechnologists in team it should be <laughs> three, but since i'm the moderator let's keep it like two panelists over here for biotechnologists yeah. and we like to, and luckily both of them are from two distinct places i mean currently in the us and europe we have heard a lot of us for now let's uh, give a break for us and let's take up europe for now so uh, i have miss uh, yeah. can you say uh, what's the job opportunity or scope for research for genetics in europe mm-hmm. i think not only for genetics uh, for all the research topics be it genetic engineering uh, you know for immunology because every university they have a, a n number of departments so and they work on uh, the diagnostic uh, advancement like the the diagnostic testing because they get the samples from the like hospital the hospital and the research center and the universities together so so they as kavita said they work on the trend um, they work on like for many covid projects and if you take covid for example covid 19 it it will involve all the categories be it genetic engineering be it biomedical engineering or immunology or cell biology it comprises of everything so if uh, if uh, i would say um, almost everywhere uh, the advance uh, the advancement of the subject and the courses are very nice so whichever you like i think you should go for it uh, and it depending upon the scholarship try try more for scholarships don't give up 
try for more scholarship because that i would say because many people doesn't know that scholarship exists that's the thing and so try for that and maybe you know you can save up some bucks and you can land it in land in your you know, good there are so many i think if you just think if you just click any of in your you know in your map and just like okay i'll select this university and get to know about do your own research you know don't believe me don't believe kavita don't trust anyone you know do your own research and get everyone's opinion and then you'll get to know and if you, it depends on your uh, priority what is your priority if you want to study in you know top uh you know top 10 universities in uk or top 10 universities in us and then you filter out you filter out your own preferences sorry so yeah you prefer out your own preferences and you decide that okay this is what i want to do and you 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 can go and check their departments how they are doing and you can check the professors number of professors number of projects they are uh, taking and number of fundings fundings depends a lot you have to check if the lab or the, if the institute or if uh, you know the department or the university is getting good fundings from for example if i am in a european uh, union uh, there i will check that if my university is getting a proper a proper uh, funding like annual funding or for the students funding from the european union i will really check that and uh, i will check the ranking and okay how much ranking because it really depends because it each uh, every uh, minor thing uh, minor thing will build up your profile because when you are going to sell yourself obviously you you know these other things matters a lot so and depending upon the department and depending upon the professors okay how the professors are and you know and for each professors and for each research work you have a um marking you have a marking and you have a index factor i think kavita must uh, you you also probably know you have a research index factor and you have uh, this uh, professor index factor for for individual personality and how much research they have done how much history they have and how much uh, the lab equipments and how much the lab is established nicely and how much students they have let it be international or their native students so it really depends on all of the things and uh, i think from if you ask me personally i would really tell choose whatever is uh, you know suitable for you and maybe it would be nice if you choose for any scholarship options always ask ask for scholarship yeah oh. with there are many merit based ones and you can just uh, you know give uh, it it mainly depends on your score bachelor's and masters or bachelor's or your research experience and then uh, you will be uh, i think you wrote uh, gre exams and then you went there and you have many gre weight scholarships or something like that and here in europe we have to write ielts examination english communication examination and then uh, according to that and according to your merit based and uh, according to your cgpa in your bachelors and according to your um, uh, in, interview how you perform your interview and according to your sop sop matters a lot uh, it's a statement of purpose and lors from your university professors minimum two lors you need and you get a, a ranking and mark for each one of them and with the total marks you you will have a final mark and with that you can uh, get the scholarship so it really it really depends on the university so mm-hmm. yes so for, for according to me all of the universities are very very nice and they are very uh, advanced Uh, with technique so go for it so uh, so it sounds interesting like yeah. you know uh, yeah. we have different benefits from different universities and different countries exactly. so if you want to yeah. learn something or you want to do your masters and if you know which field you're going to go into specifically then maybe they should like yeah. you know start working on it see which country yeah. or which particular country that particular field is growing or where the research is going on and then uh, do the best out of it i guess that's why it, uh, yeah. we have been uh, discussing you know all this time okay so uh, before you know we go to uh, the next questions of the audience uh, let's finish off round 4 so we do have still two questions to be completed mm-hmm. among round 4 so uh, first question as i asked how did you deal with homesickness uh, uh, are you asking me anyone open question <laughs> oh, maybe i would start uh, from myself 
Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, from sick, I've been, yeah, <laughs> because it's a okay. very uh, critical uh, situation. I really miss my home, obviously. I've been, uh, the thing is, I, I didn't go home. Like, wow. Uh, the, I think I came <laughs> here to Italy in 2018. Yeah. Until then, I couldn't go home. It's not like I don't want to, I badly want to go. But then whenever I had, uh, I only got two months of my summer uh, summer holidays but then i decided to go for an erasmus program that was the only time i could allocate for the internship because mean meanwhile the other time i was studying and it just kavita just like kavita said you know you have to be you have to get the a grade there is no 50 there is no 40 out of 100 there is no 50 60 40 no you mm-hmm. have to get straight 90 that's yeah. all 90 to 100 that's what your mark so if you get like literally even 89 you will fail so my case was very bad and I think there are there's so many people who are like they'll study nicely and then they'll just they'll study for a week or two or three and they'll get good marks. But for me, I have to study like for what six months for one subject and die for that. I it was difficult for me. So I have to really spend all of my, you know, the whole semester and the whole year dedicated for studying. And we had also lab. Um, uh, morning we used to have the classes and afternoon we used to have. Uh, the laboratory work each one of the student will be allocated for a separate lab based on your interest and uh, four to five hour five hours we will be learning and ongoing projects about the lab laboratory techniques so it was very nice so you really work on the um, main uh, cell lines main cell lines and all of your uh, whatever the topic interest you and you could also take that for the thesis so i was very involved in that and only the only one month I got, I went for an Erasmus internship. And the next time COVID happened, uh, and the third time, you know, uh, when Italy was hitting hard, you know, with the cases, uh, in, in India was doing better. But then I I couldn't travel both of the time. Whenever I was free, something was happening uh, any other way, be it in Italy or in India. So I couldn't travel. Maybe this uh, this December, uh, I'm really planning to go home. It's very difficult to, you know, uh, allocate some time and talk to your parents. Obviously, I, you get busy with your schedule. You have yeah. to do your own stuff. Like you have to cook your own food and you have to cook, you have to clean your house. And so you are very busy. I think that's how you can, and you will, you will find many communities, your in Indian friends, uh, all your, you will have your classmates, you will have like native students, uh, friends, your so you get to along with your circle and you know uh, you socialize you have to socialize if you're not planning to do uh, if you're not planning for socializing thing i think that would be really bit depressing a little bit but then it's better if you you know talk and you know you have to make yourself busy and that way i think you can uh, avoid uh, homesickness a little bit and try to you know I am that person. I think I don't talk uh, to my parent uh, like every day on everyday basis, but I would really suggest like, please talk to your parents every day. <laughs> so it's, I think that that way you can avoid uh, this homesickness. Homesickness. So, okay. so uh, next. But then you can manage. It's not that mm-hmm. difficult. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know i would like to thank you for you know giving hints on what my next question is going to be so let's wait for that so before the <laughs> uh, next question can i have the opinions of satish uh, mr satish and ms kavita like how to deal with form sickness i could recollect like i did have a talk with this with uh, ms kavita earlier, <laughs> so i have some idea of how long it's going to be so <laughs> yeah let's, so let's discuss with ms satish first yeah <laughs> okay okay yeah so in, in my experience um yeah homesickness it persists in every person when you are studying you are, you are newly studying or newly joined in uh for abroad so when uh, like uh, in my experience, when I graduated in the month of July, June, July in 2019, and I had only two months grace period where I was really hell like processing my visa process, this process. I was like running from up and down from Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi it was like very hectic. And once I reached on September uh, to Taiwan, uh, a month later, uh, I had a uh, I was like settling over here. I was like, uh, okay. I was like uh, busy in searching what professor, what research and all. Uh, in the month of October, uh, uh, like 
university mgi university announced the i think uh, the graduation ceremony for my batch i was like oh my god i was asking kausala ma'am also will it the ceremony will be done before i go to taiwan or not like it was a big uh, like the question was not i was not answer so i think uh, when uh, but i remember nitish send me a pic about where my name was placed in the seat i was like oh my god i am missing this <laughs> because mgi graduation ceremony is lot of fun because uh, every ceremony graduation ceremony for my seniors for the batch of 2018 or 2017 i usually attended all the graduation ceremony but for my graduation ceremony i was not there here even like it was like very sad for me even though i'm st- i uh, joined i was i need to be happy like i'm started my higher education study but i was sad when nitish said send me that picture of my seat i was like oh my god <laughs> but then yeah you need to move on and have a courage uh, like certain like you will like there would be situations where you will be down you will be like so down you need to open up with your friends even you are not talking to family is okay open with your friends share with your friends talk make them video call make just disturb them and just share your problems even though you are not listening to them you just pour it out and yeah you will be yeah happy yeah yeah usually sometimes i talk to i i'll give my update what happening in taiwan to kausala ma'am kausala ma'am will be soon as soon as she'll be replying me wow good okay i'll share with the students like it's like so uh, like i usually like as uh, revati said just busy like do something do or something or the other just don't sit alone in abroad do like make a checklist of like today what you need to do what you need to uh, like or just go for a walk and uh, go to a supermarket just walk around what what are the foods you are that are available just just do something or the other yeah so yeah, we have got some uh, similar answers and some add ons as well so uh, i could really feel you bro like now missing out my graduation ceremony and you know everything <laughs> so, so i can now i can really feel you how that thing could have felt for you so okay coming now you know uh, you know at last or not the least is from miss kavita so how did you deal with home sickness home sickness <laughs> it's going to hit hard first you'll be like i'm going to us posting status in facebook instagram coming here and crying all night i want to go home i want to meet my dad i want to meet my mom i miss my mom sambar itli everything will hit you so hard make so much of friends new friends like how many ever you can make good friends have fun with them try to create a hobby in my case i started cooking i don't know for some reasons so you can distract yourself doing something that is very like very much like passionate about or even mm-hmm. as revati and satish mentioned you can do something uh, like keep yourself busy apart from that uh, i was extremely opposite from revati i don't know for some reasons i used to talk daily daily evening even today my mom will call like every day i talk to them and take breaks definitely <laughs> revati you have to go yeah. to india this december <laughs> no other go so for sure take, for sure <laughs> breaks go back cherish that memory and come again so that's what i do i do travel mm-hmm. to india every year for a month or like however i get i go i enjoy as much as i can come back with that memories and next 10 or 12 months i'm going to be happy with those memories seeing that photos and be plan for next year that's what i do as soon as i come back what i'm going to do next year so make good friends have fun go out party <laughs> have good friends so that's how i came out of homesickness personally and um, there are many options as well like you have to find your hobby you can watch like i think listening to music reading books hanging around with people cooking or even video call with your friends in india will really help okay. as sati said so that's so, what yeah so i could say like uh, from all the three of you keep yourself engaged spend your time in studies or something if not distract yourself get into some new hobbies or make friends go out enjoy you know go to Maybe india once how come how how you been here in us for yeah like it's two months maybe so, so you like are coping or something 
it's, okay, it's i think you were in a new uh, you were in the proper stage to reply uh, you know to give a proper answer for this i think you'll uh, be because you'll be new, out of uh, sickness or yeah. like going through yeah. that no. yeah. what phase <laughs> yeah so have please boy, you know. share your yeah so i would like to add no my answer with the next question as well like you know how is the covid impact on the admissions and stuff but then since yeah. you asked this question i would like to start it from here you know uh, spending my time at home for like almost a year and a half due to covid you know since march 2020 till uh, july 2021 or so so you know that period of time was like you know a lot of quality time so now coming here to the us it's just been like two months so that uh, i know as uh, ms kavita said you know you go once a while and then cherish memories and then you go on for like 10 months or 12 you know that's how i guess i am yeah, in that please don't because i have like one and a yeah, half years completely being at home please don't so, be like me you should go yeah <laughs> we are booking tickets for reyati <laughs> this summer if you are going <laughs> thank you so, thank you <laughs> so yeah as i said covid 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 you know i don't want to prolong like you know the last and final question on front four i guess like, you know we okay. com- we have shuffled out every rounds and we have done a panel discussion so round five we completed and now we are going to complete round four so <laughs> round four the final question the impact of covid on admissions or jobs so like one point that you would say for that so this is how it was impacted and we overcame in this way so if that was the thing what you do be saying like where were you okay i i'll start with answering this question uh, in my experience uh, as uh, when i joined here i uh, that time there was no covid anywhere mm-hmm. but then i was planning because six months i was like uh, settling here but then i planned to come to india i booked tickets and all but then some some of my friends suggested please don't go please take covid seriously i i accepted the suggestion and i cl- cancel the my tickets and all i think it was so it was i was lucky enough i didn't get myself into trouble in the initial first year and then deal with some learning something or the other uh but uh, this covid situation for uh, getting job for me it was positive is because in taiwan uh, the entry is restricted for the foreigners uh there are many protocols so as a foreigner they are in demand of foreign students to get into the company so it was a positive uh, ray of hope for the foreigners who are studying and like freshly graduated they are there are they are taking they are recruiting so i think it was a positive positive th- thing happened during covid for us uh yeah so i think yeah i think there was no any negative impact for me for covid just except okay. traveling for me yeah. because all like i was dealing have video calls talking to family friends i think i somehow managed uh to get rid of the home sickness but then the opportunity knocks the door like i got mm-hmm. recruited in a company like i was happy enough yeah. yeah so it's so happy to hear that you know uh, despite all the hardships that you know people all over the globe has been going through and here and there when you hear some happy news it makes us feel positive like you know there is mm-hmm. light despite whatever happens mm-hmm. and yeah thank you uh, mr mr sadish like you know you have literally made a good contribution for that so can i have the same what was the notes of the other two in a just in a very short maybe and... i will yeah maybe i will start is it okay yeah so for me i don't know it was like 50 50 i would say mm-hmm. because you know seeing uh, we, i i was away from home and it was difficult to see how the covid was hitting slowly one by one and you know country by country uh if i would say that uh, i was in my masters but then i was trying also for the phd like i said before so i was also into the uh, admi- uh, you know uh, applying for phd yeah. and in the admission state so i got some uh, good opportunities i got some internship opportunities i got some job opportunities and uh, also i got many rejections so it's like it was 
like a balance i was getting uh, everything in an equal amount of uh, um, you know equal amount so for me it was with both mixed emotions obviously okay. something is happening around in the pandemic situation so there was many rejection because mm-hmm. i was in italy because oh. in, in that time it is italy was it was badly. like too much and yeah. in many yeah in many many professors they they said no oh, sorry we are not taking students from italy because you know that time it was hitting hard and people doesn't know what to do how the travel restrictions and all will be working but then still i managed to get a job i managed to get an internship in the covid pandemic and i managed to get my phd so for me it's it went well even after all the ups and downs yeah it's good to uh, hear this you know despite all the hardships and you know uh, rather than yeah. what other panelists say like being honest you've been in italy which was so bad and the whole world knows it and it i guess like, and i was it, in the uh, same uh, that particular region the okay. north region okay. where it was evolved so it was difficult uh, like you yeah. know without so get, you cannot even see your roommate and it was very difficult yeah, yeah. yeah but still uh, you know like everything has ended up good <laughs> and that's kind of a sweet note for all of us you know being alumni or exactly. being juniors from mgi university we do feel <laughs> happy for that uh, yeah thank yeah, you yeah thank you thank you yeah so um, from miss kamita like what how was it for you like you graduated yeah. so you i guess you were in your final year of- i think yeah so when i was in like third semester uh, we had covid and all our uh, like lab sessions went online that was the craziest part we had to do lab <laughs> online which was so crazy no, i think no one would have done ever that in biotech but somehow our professors were really helpful with that they recorded their experiments and uh, the way that happened was they would record and send us their experiments and we have to analyze the result maybe it was in that kind of way so we were trying to gain more knowledge but sort of after the classes open they gave us so much space we can go and learn and we were set free with our we can set an appointment with professors if i for personally sometimes i wanted to do western blotting and i had to email my professor professor i want to learn this technique whenever you're free let me know in that case they'll be giving us an appointment you can go and work with them and then come back so that's what uh, coming like even now some like not all classes are face to face but there are still online classes going on but i think it was uh, really good that we came out of this but i would say covid never impacted the admission process it impacted only the way people came here because there were no flights they couldn't come here but they get they got admissions most of them got like so many didn't apply because of covid and that time whoever applied mm-hmm. got admission in us and at that time because there were very less number of students applying gre was waived ielts was waived for some of the universities so i think gre was one of the most like bit toughest thing to come around in us but because of that people were easily getting admission and they came in so only they couldn't come in i think first semester they took online and after that they came in here and their classes are face to face like labs being online was the toughest thing for us and some the we somehow managed it at the end and even applying for jobs i applied during covid only but we got like so many interviews like positive things covid has given like changed our lifestyle but still things are happening in a good way for all of us yeah. that's, that's what to, yeah uh, like mm-hmm. you know uh, you also said like you know for you as uh, the gre has been waived and so like i know being one student who got admitted this year in the us i would like to add upon that and finish off round 4 for <laughs> now and for a while so the thing is like you know when gre was said it was it got waived the importance on your profile your yeah. so that when spiking high so it was like if you had spent your uh, undergraduate just with academics you would have found it very difficult to get into any university in the united states or if you had a, a quite a low score all your gre would still get you in but yeah that's what so literally put it, everything down for many people and yeah it was quite difficult this year to get uh, admission especially when i applied it was like highly competitive and yeah your profile you need to build on your profile skills right from your undergraduate degree if you want to be 
100% sure that you want to get into one of the top universities anywhere in the globe it's not going to be like taiwan you know lithuania italy or us or uk wherever it is if you build your skills and that's where you grow so i would like to say that alone on this note and before we go into round 6 a small note from our speaker so i just messaged him the questions that we asked the other panelist let me go in brief so uh, we had vijay kumar who was supposed to meet us over here so he did a, a masters he is doing a masters in msc uh, data science and advanced computation computation and he's doing it in university of uh, readings uk so the next question is like, he also has got a scholarship so he did mention that it was because like he got an opportunity to do his internship in the uk before he got the admission so that was during his uh, study in mj university and he was also funded by mj university for his uh, internship period during that so which was again another success story where the funding for abroad internships played a vital role so he got a scholarship and he's currently and he also mentioned that he's having a lab meeting and that's why he wasn't able to connect back again and again so yeah we are all happy for rm nai seeing the matining lab meetings and keeping themselves busy with you know research across the globe so uh, i would like to take up if there's any more questions from the audience because we have already answered a couple of questions if anyone else have any questions please dot us in we'll answer them and then we'll move on to round 6 real quick any questions i don't think we have questions so maybe we'll uh, move on to round 6 the final round of the panel discussion it feels quite uh, so that we came to round 6 despite we spoke you know we shared a lot so how was it like what, one piece of advice if you know if every panelist give we can you know we can conclude it with that i suppose you know uh, we all said like how much important scholarship is how much important you select which country and uh, how important skills are and we also discussed about uh, homesickness and how do we deal it so i guess we would have given a perfect track for the students to say like what should i plan what am i going to face and what am i going to get by the end of it i guess we have covered uh, three phases which a student would be going through or will be going through if they wanted to move abroad or even if they're going to stay back in india itself you know though this a uh, panel discussion aim want to give insights about higher education and job opportunities in abroad i feel like we also gave insights about higher education in india as well but significant amount of importance and you know the different educational uh, style that they would be facing here in the you know maybe in uk europe or you know in taiwan or in us were all discussed so i feel like this is one complete of a panel discussion i would not say this was a panel discussion but it was more of you know a very good uh, interaction between the alumni i you know saying panel discussion looks much formal but then we went in and we discussed a lot and we also went more off track from the you know from the plan that we had of going as per you know, round 1 round 2 round 3 round 4 but then i felt the interaction went more lively and all of you guys like thanks for speaking your heart out it was it felt so really good and it was so connecting so yeah uh, i want uh, the panelists you to give one piece of advice and give a good finishing for this panel discussion like saying that like, this is the close of the panel discussion and this also happens to be the 25th day of the 25 day alumni conclave so i would like to really have this be the perfect dessert for the best meal that we have been cooking and what mgr alumni association has been pulling out for the past uh, 25 days so can i have you guys like give you a final 
Yeah, so really congrats for the all 25 days and now it's a world record like sooner. So really, like uh, entire team who are behind this and we are very much happy that we are on the 25th day and we special like we feel very special for that of course. And thanks for the chairman and president of uh, MGR for uh, like organizing this event. Also, Kausalya, ma'am, you have been really a true support for all of this event, really struggling all of us to put together. And thank you so much for that. And um, so the advice from my side would be like, don't overthink while choosing for universities. Go the flow, <laughs> surely. And um, there is there is nothing. in the world that you can't do everything you can do give it a try try hard work maybe you'll 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 face many failures all of us did but at some point you'll be like this is my point so just give it a try hard work don't worry about failures failures are like your stepping stones as usual like you know that and just give it a try please try to come here and meet all of us will have fun definitely <laughs> and your life will be like in different level and you'll see a change in your life for sure and make use of the opportunities from mgr so ma'am is there and like there are so many of you like i heard like there are many opportunities right now which they are guiding you really make use of it go and talk to your professors don't be hesitant like us just go and speak to them this if it's your thing you have to go and talk if you go and talk you will get things open and then have fun and stay safe thank you i uh, thank you ms kavita like uh, can i have it from uh, ms revati revati yeah so sure. uh, <laughs> i don't know if i could uh, give some advice or not whatever i told it was all of my experience and it was my own and an opinion so uh, nothing just like that. don't leave the opportunities because if you see something don't leave it try to go for, at least you will try out what could be the worst thing you will try out and you'll get to know at least you can get the experience out of it and with that experience you can move or you can you'll get a better clarity so don't hesitate to you know if something is stopping you to go to abroad just remove that idea and keep keep on going i know it takes a lot of effort to one by one have patience apply come just like kavita said we can meet have fun and have a beer so it's <laughs> like try try uh, don't don't uh, hesitate for anything and like kavita said uh, we have i've seen like when we were uh, coming out of um, i mean when our batch was coming out i think that time uh, the nga association of foreign affairs was starting i think it yeah. was starting kausalya ma'am was just i think she started that organization but now it has become so nice i i see a lot of collaborations from taiwan <laughs> sorry to interrupt you revati sorry yeah, of, sorry to interrupt yeah, you it is yeah. uh, in the at that time the exchange programs were booming yeah uh, so yeah. international programs were starting is, uh, exactly yeah, it is already established yes, one yes, okay dear yeah yeah okay. oh okay okay yes ma'am i remember that because you uh, collected some uh, list of students that who wants to participate in that yes, so yes. i think i think most of And the juniors were already classes going were there, to taiwan yeah. during your classes yeah, only so all was, the guests used to come and so i'll be running here and there <laughs> exactly that's how i got right. to know that's how i got mm. to know about the italy scholarship that's how i got to know so that's how just don't leave it uh, the university itself is having a lot of opportunities just it, it's right there in front of you so i think that would be my advice N- nothing else you will figure it out uh, it's not a big um, And thank you, thank our management, so. ma, who's really encouraging. Thank you so students. much. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for yeah, yeah, conducting everything. Are, Kausalya, yeah. ma'am. Our management and is Cyril wonderful. Rath, sir. <laughs> yes, <who's laughs> Sorry, ma'am. The to, yeah, who's encouraging yeah. the students to apply for the scholarship opportunities? It is very rare, but they are still encouraging our yeah. students to apply the scholarship opportunities. Am I right, Satish? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Cyril yeah, Rathsel was really. so helpful for me. Like I was like dealing with uh, department uh, uh, in the final year. Cyril Rathsel, like you just go, go experience, get the experience. <laughs> Will be helpful for you. Yeah. I I guess yeah, even nice. put a lot by the management, especially be, you know I was yeah. a part of the 
batch which got stuck because of covid like you know it's new for everyone like for us for the management for the you know we are applying for so it was a complete dilemma i guess if it wasn't for the support at offered i couldn't have uh, apply to any of the university because i've seen my friends who are belonging to other colleges and universities they were not able to apply because they weren't able to get the credentials documents so i guess yeah so that's uh, something which i feel right from silraj uh, ramesh uh, or management and course i'm everyone were like a part of the support program yeah <laughs> uh, i would just add a little small point i think right from my bachelor's kausala uh, ma'am gave my you know department professors they gave me you know i was not even having a plan for starting the masters they gave me the lor they told go and apply so i think they were a little push at some point at some some place they were they were always pushing us like go and try for it be it the management i think i've run i've run to the administration office so many times for diploma certificates and that so i think they were very helpful be it also siril ratha ramesh sir they they still remember because i used to go and like complain them i want this i want that so thanks really for also conducting this one congratulations to all the panelists i think so it's, it's, thanks for contacting us so thank you so much like even uh, thanks to departments all our departments which were, uh, which have supported us with you know, yeah academics no academics everything so like i thought like i could go with the final note from uh, mr satish but then i saw a question from the audience and i feel like we can answer it within a minute so mm-hmm. every time i study you know, never think of that it's going to be like that uh, you know one student has asked like every time are you going to be studying study hard means it's like So you you'll be studying for a very limited of time, but when you're gonna do that, you're gonna put in a lot of concentration onto it, and you're just gonna work on that. And that's what our panelists have been saying: study hard. And I thought I would answer this because I have just started this. I, I'm able to relate to what my panelists are trying to say. So I'm kind of in between you guys in the audience and the panelists over here. So yeah, yeah. So that's how it is gonna be. So yeah, uh, now back to Mr. Satish, your final note, final conclusion. Yeah, like I would like to tell one thing is like in my experience, uh, even in when I was in MGR in doing my bachelor's, I was like uh, jumping from uh, I would I was usually less less present in my department. Was jumping from mechanical to Anna Block to here OIA. I was jumping from th- from my third year. So I think. take up a multidisciplinary project you will be getting learning a new things like you will be getting the connecting the dots from coding uh, from uh, application based take up a multidisciplinary project and you'll get a new experience like don't focus only in a one particular major take up a multidisciplinary project you'll like it would be very useful for you because in my experience when i was doing mechanical um after coming uh, when i was doing mechanical in masters my project was about uh, biomedical applications like i was uh, not only about it was a micro robot for for doing like uh, for some some in, internal micro robot of uh, dealing with some disease application so in that like i i got to study about some coding matlab uh electronic stuffs uh biomedical stuffs like what are the limitations because the micro robot need to enter the body what are the limitations so i like i was like so a le- good learning experience so i think multidisciplinary projects are quite good to learn and um uh, the one advice was like i'm hoping to uh do this session live at mgr yeah some day i'm like i i want to do like because kausala ma'am was discussing with me when you'll be in chennai just message me we'll may arrange uh, the session for you in live with the students like uh, even though the situation is like that this uh, conclave long conclave 25 days uh, it's need for the time for the students in this situation is so helpful uh, i think the students should use uh, and make you best of it for their career 
yeah and any 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 questions we all are there mj alumni are there everywhere so we have the association for using the best of it and helping the students to shine for their academic career as well as yeah for the jobs thank you thank you mr satish really great satish thank you ma'am so this i guess uh, we have a panelist a perfect panel discussion i would suppose i felt so good after this discussion so yeah thank you yes for now unmute your mic yeah yes ma'am as we came to end of the meet today now we invite dr priya duraraj ma'am assistant professor department of biotechnology to propose a word of thanks for this informative meet please ma'am thank you prana uh, i feel uh, winners aren't too necessary but people who never quit so it gives us an immense pleasure to thank all the dignitaries for gracing this event it would like to thank all our eminent speakers ms kavita Satish Kumar, Ms. Revati, Vijay Kumar, and Mr. Sati, R- Nitesh Raj, who all honored this conclave with their ideas and gave us a lot of experiences and for enlightening us with their knowledge. And I'd like to thank our respected BP ma'am, Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi ma'am, Registrar Dr. C. Parini Velu sir, Additional Registrar Dr. Suril sir, uh, Ramesh sir, and Dr. Kausalya ma'am and Dr. Subhichra ma'am for the great innovation and thought. last but not least our beloved audience for making this session very interactive and meaningful and i also like to thank from the bottom of my heart prasanna from alumni office and ori team alumni association team and magic association and once again i thank one and all for making this panel discussion a great success and i really want to thank uh, two people anitish and uh, kavita uh, for spending your time because i know it's early morning 5 am and you gave lot of you took lot of effort and we thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank so you much ma'am. Nitesh and Kavita for sharing your time and mm-hmm. i feel so honored and you really share lot of thoughts and knowledge to our sh- students so hope uh, uh, there will be lot of juniors joining you by next year <laughs> sure we are ready to welcome yeah. all of them yeah. anytime thank you mm-hmm. thank you so much all ma thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you ma'am thank, thank you thank you ma'am Mm-hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, all one. Thank yeah. you. Take bye care. Bye. bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Nitish. Thank you. Thank you for.